With everything in life, people struggle from a variety of different reasons. However, with all of that said, our community is made up of like-minded event professionals, meeting professionals, hospitality and corporate travel professionals. And these are all individuals who have the same vision that I do, who are just as concerned as I am and want to find those solutions. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Keynote Curators Podcast. I'm Seth Deckman, your Keynote Curator, and I'm excited to introduce our guest today, Janice Cardinale. Did I say it right? Cardinal, Cardinale? Perfect. Okay. Janice, where does this podcast find you today? It finds me in Scottsdale, Arizona. But that is not your that is not your regular home, is it? No, it's not. My regular home is Toronto. Ooh, a little bit colder than Arizona right now. Absolutely. That's yeah. why I've escaped. Yeah. You're one of the Canadians that comes to the great hot south. Yes. Well, it's so great to have you. I'm glad that you're warm and, you know, comfortable. We have a great conversation lined up today. I'm really excited. And Janice, you know, you may not love the accolades, but it's unavoidable, Janice. You were considered and named a top 100 most influential person in the events industry by Eventex Index. And this is for your creativity. This is for your vision and your capacity to innovate. You were also inducted into the 2023 Smart Women in Meetings Hall of Fame, which is no small feat for being a leader who's moving the events industry forward and was featured among Biz Bash's list of 15 over 50 last year. Now, just that alone makes me nervous. And now I have to step up my game a little bit more because I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm amongst, you know, for Canadians, Wayne Gretzky, for Americans, maybe Michael Jordan or Kobe Bryant or LeBron James. But, you know, the, the stakes are high. The stakes are high, listeners. Now, as the founder of Event Minds Matter, say that 10 times fast, you've established and created and founded this community of like-minded event professionals that are building brave spaces to amplify the industry's conversation on emotional health and wellness. I'm really excited for that to be a a, a starting point for us, emotional health. In, In our preparation, Janice, recently you begin utilizing the term emotional health as opposed to mental health. Could could you just share with us um, your thought behind that and kind of your view on that? Thank you, Seth. And thank you, by the way, for having me here today. I really appreciate it. The one thing we definitely have in common is that our audiences are very much the same. The reason for emotional health and well-being has come out just recently when we as a collective community has spoken about this change because when we first established Event Minds Matter, we had really envisioned a younger generation of people who we could create content for education, resources, initiatives. And over time, and this has been going on for two years, we just felt that maybe moving forward, that the word mental health did not have the right connotation for some of the nuances that we are approaching and endeavoring to do. So we made a decision that we felt that emotional health and well-being is something that our industry truly can embrace and cares about. So that's why we made the change. Yeah. And it captures maybe even a broader uh, scope, mental, not only there's a stigma that when you hear that, whether it's justified or not, people have a prejudgment or a kind of a predisposition and it can be constraining the stigma, but also it maybe falls for people who have preconceived notions just inside of a psychological or even a psychiatric type of constraint. And emotional well-being captures, I think, a broader, a broader perspective. Would you agree with that view? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that when you get into the side of things as a full-time job, whatever you want to call it, community, 
you have to be very sensitive and delicate and gentle when it comes to the topic and subject matter. And having spent two years involved with this, I recognize the fact that you also need to really think about how other people feel. And it's not to be opinionated or judged, but rather to make people feel comfortable within your environment, whether it be virtual, live, or otherwise. Yeah. And that comfort comes from, you know, being interested, having empathy, caring, um, wanting to, you know, for lack of a better word, include and be part of a team and belonging, which are all topics and themes that are very of the moment right now. I, I want to continue on this line, but I think it's important for our listeners who probably are well aware of you, but might not know what I would call maybe the origin story. A couple of rapid fire questions and you can take them any way you want. Why the name Event Minds Matter? Um, walk us through the, you know, how it got started, who is part of this community, and you know, what do you provide in a very literal sense as far as your services go? I'll take you back a couple of years when it started after all the COVID. way back, all the way back to when I had hair. And when you had hair, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So, and I hate saying I'm, I'm sorry, I apologize for that. But two years ago, I wrote an article on LinkedIn that attracted a lot of attention from all kinds of different people, mostly people I did not know and people who I've gotten to know. And I recognized the fact that there were so many people out there that wanted a platform that they could speak on. They wanted to listen to people like myself who were advocates of mental health. I myself have suffered for many years with depression. I know what it's like not to be able to get out of bed in the morning and deal with your work every day. I am also the guinea pig that went through many different things to try and get myself better. So with everything in life, people struggle from a variety of different reasons. It's not always necessarily stress-related or anxiety. Some people like myself just have a chemistry and clinical you know, diagnosis. However, with all of that said, our community is made up of like-minded event professionals, meeting professionals, hospitality, and corporate travel professionals. And these are all individuals who have the same vision that I do, who are just as concerned as I am and want to find those solutions. Because I think that while many people are talking in this industry, I think that there also has been a lot of lip service paid to the, what the real solutions are. And I'm happy to get into what I think the real solution is because it's taken me two years to get to what that looks like. Yeah. I'd love to dive deep into that, you know, in following you. And I know you're, you've built a big program around it with the doctor is in who, you know, which by the time this podcast gets published, you already have played, but you know, it's interesting in following your promotion of that event and your, what you've constructed and, and built for that event. I really, uh, really resonated with me, and I'm going to paraphrase here, and you can correct me where I'm wrong. Part of the breakthrough, Janice, is that emotional well-being, mental health, which we can call now an, an aged or an antiquated term, emotional well-being, emotional health is now in the conversation, where before it wasn't even. So it's not enough just by proxy or by the fact that it's in the conversation. Now, what do you do with it? You know, we call it the early days. What was showing up? Yoga at an event or kale shakes at an event or a quiet space at an event. Nothing wrong with them. But I think in your words, they occurred more as band-aids and they weren't getting, as they say in New England, to the heart of the matter, right? They really weren't getting to the heart of the matter. And look, it's Event Minds Matter is providing this content, is providing a space that amplifies what's important and expands on our ability to optimize our capacities at work. And being emotionally fit and well is part of that. And it's important to be able to do yoga and learn how to govern and regulate our bodies and our mind. But take us a little bit deeper beyond the band-aids, if you will, and get to the heart of the matter. Well, 
I just started writing something called Band-Aids, Benefits, and Breakouts. I think I'm actually going to end up turning it into a book, potentially. But here's my- I'm in. Count me in. I want, I want an autographed copy. I'm getting dibs. Okay. <laughs> um, but recently, I have been talking to a lot of leaders. One of the things when I came into 2024 that I felt very strongly about was, and I call these trends, are safety, trust, and human sustainability. I think that beyond our industry, one of the things that has happened is there are a lot of people who don't trust leadership government, and a variety of other things. And people, generally speaking, don't feel safe. Part of that could be from the war as well. So when I think about human sustainability and I think about you know psychological safety, one of the things over two years that I've watched and I've also taken part in is all of the Band-Aid solutions and benefit solutions. Because when I speak to a leader about you know something that I think should be be going on, or I feel that I can give a little more help in a certain area to support an organization, I find that the leaders think that their benefits are what is going to make a difference in that person's life. But psychological safety is not about nutrition or yoga or, you know, the mat or whatever. It's really about Having a space within an organization that's brave for people to have a conversation, having your management be able to recognize a problem because that relates to productivity, being able to have the right language to use, understanding that you don't do the talking, you do the listening, and then having the credible resources. I mean, we see resources all over the place. They're not all credible. So... This is part of what Event Minds Matter has been involved with for the last two years. But ultimately, what I see now, and I didn't see this two years ago, training people in leadership and management and employees has to happen for the next generation. I don't know if our generation, mine in particular, because I was in the event industry for 20 years selling corporate entertainment, we're not the ones that are going to change. We're habitual. We've been doing it for years. But the younger generation is not going to work like we did. And they have boundaries and they have expectations. And what we need as leaders to be are teachers, coaches, and mentors. And so there's something to be said about that. And that's what I'm trying to convey to the leaders in our industry. And very few of them are listening. I don't, they don't seem to prioritize having that kind of training. They think that you know, giving uh, X amount of dollars towards therapy sessions is what's going to be the answer. It's not going to change anything. And so, so do you see this as part of, you know, for certified meeting professionals or other certifications as part of either a continuing ed or part of a requi- something being requisite in their training and certification? 1,000%. Yeah. The Event Industry Council has the exam that CMP, CMMs would take once they have gotten all of their online courses and hours in. But I have actually been in touch with them and I've seen what they offer in terms of the courses leading up to these certifications. And there isn't anything on emotional health and well-being, nothing. Mm. So it's not being addressed. Yet there are other things that are being addressed that are important, like human trafficking sustainability, but nothing where it comes to the mental health and well-being of an industry full of people who are considered the six most stressful jobs. And now I'm going to tell you what really is flabbergasting in my mind is that the first five most stressful jobs all are mandated for mental health training. So that speaks mounds to me, and I've tried to convey that, but I'm still not being heard. But I won't give up. I keep trying day in and day out. Are you, are you finding, you know, these organizations that do certify are, there is an appetite for it. They just don't know how to weave it into their current system, their current structure, or is there resistance for other reasons? I wish I could answer that a hundred percent, Seth. I cannot. I don't know what it is, to be very honest with you. Maybe they, in their minds, have destigmatized this whole thing. I don't Mm. know. Because it it feels like I'm getting so much pushback and there's not even 
an opportunity to explore the possibilities. And yet, when I write about this, for example, on our LinkedIn community page, and I talk about it at different you know, events that I'm at, I have a whole bunch of CMPs who would love to see this happen. Mm. So I don't understand. I don't know what I have to do. Literally, yeah. I've written a white paper on this and right. presented, you know, what this could look like. And it's not, it's not a lot of money. That's the other thing. You know, it's always financial. It tends to, you know, direct what these right. associations do. But, you know, an online course for $95 is no different than, actually, it is different than people sharing or having you take a sales or marketing course to make your, you know, your team better. Sure. Well, your team would be a heck of a lot better if they took some training and understood and created a space within that organization to really have honest conversations, which I'm sorry, they're not happening. But it's like CPR. Hmm. You get trained. 99.9999999%. We're, we're not going to be using CPR or the Heimlich maneuver or some other like life-saving. But you need to have inhabit the skill so that when it's there, because if you're talking about marketing or experiences for your attendees and how to provide uh, luxury and you know fold in content and all that, that's great. But if it's on top of an environment, an energy, and a culture that is off balance, not connected, in survival mode, struggling with whatever aspect and iteration of emotional health and well being. It's kind of like putting um, icing on top of a you know what cake, you know, a shit pie. And really, I don't think a $95 course or a $200 course or a $49 course is the thing because if you get the powers that be, whether it's these certifying organizations or these industry leader organizations, they find sponsors, they find a way to make it work. I think Janice, and you know, it's my humble opinion, you're loosening the ground and it's not easy work. Before you can plant the seeds and even water, you're, you're pulling the rocks out of the soil, putting the roots out of the soil. You're, you're loosening the ground to have people become more enrolled in the idea. And while you hear on the front line, the certified meeting professionals are like, absolutely, you provide that, I'd sign up. The ones that need to provide are the ones that are the hardest ones to get to. What are, what are the things that they're saying? It's what they're not saying, Seth. I mean, I feel like a pioneer, you know, from the olden days, right? Trying to get something that really should have been long ago dealt with, not only, you know, in our industry, but at the university and college levels where they're also teaching, you know, event management, creative design, hospitality, and tourism. It's what they're not saying. You know, if I send an email to some of them, they don't respond. Like, I don't know what I have to do, you mm. know, to get somebody to just take a call and have a conversation. It's like this industry has blinders on. Mm. And if it's not the sexiest new topic, it's not happening. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm in competition, let's say, with AI. Yeah. Which, you know, I don't yeah. see where the competition is happening. Yeah. And you, yeah, you, you mentioned the sexiest next topic or trend or, or yeah. mode uh, of the day in event design or event execution. And it is that way. I feel the same way with keynote speakers. Oh, this book is out. Oh, this author who already wrote, this is another bestseller. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this really serving the attendees? Is this really serving the messaging, the initiatives, the bigger picture beyond this event? the through line of what you want to accomplish, you know, for the next event and the one and how you, the one after that. And it's no different. You know, I think you, the work is incredibly important, Janice, and it's the destigmatization. And I don't want to say the normalization of it, but the ability to have it be part and parcel on equal footing with everything else that people are getting trained in. And events are one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful vehicle for change, for marketing innovation, for participant innovation, for production innovation. They are vehicles designed to carry newness, new ideas, fresh ideas, 
cutting edge ideas. And this is one of them that is yet to be woven in. You know, I'm grateful for anything that anybody can help us to support what we're trying to do. You know, I didn't look at the little fish in the sea. I looked at all the big fishes and across borders and thought to myself, we are crippling ourselves by not properly training ourselves. And I just think that people are very scared of this particular yeah. topic. Yeah. They don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. We don't, they don't even want to have to deal with it. Yeah. But what they don't realize is that all the problems of the world right now, a lot of it stems on how people are feeling. And until we can have more psychological safety in the workplace, this is going to continue long past when I'm gone. Like, it's just the facts of life. And it's a shame because it could be so simple and leaders and association heads are making it so difficult. And it's a question of, you know, look, there are serious issues that might need medication, might need professional help, but you're not talking specifically about that. You're, you're, you're talking in the bigger picture, having this be woven in as part of the entire curriculum, the entire way of being, and the entire kind of water that we drink, that it's part and parcel of it, along with all the other umpteen types of aspects of this industry that are equally important. But at the foundation, people need to be safe. People need to know that they're in an environment where they can be trusted and get trust and be heard and be served. And we're not talking about like, oh my God, go to therapy. That's one small strain, albeit very important. We're talking about Do supervisors, managers, leaders understand when there's a red flag that comes up? Maybe a vendor is coming in hot. Maybe there was a breakdown. Maybe there's a situation going on in the region or culturally that's impacting a a specific incident or an event. It's the awareness that you're talking about. 100%. You were so spot on. I couldn't have said it better than you. Well, I will will say this, you know. My heart is into this. I have a passion for this. As much pushback as I get, I'm not giving up. I have never been a person that gave up anything in my life if I really believed in it. And I just think that, you know, what we as a community, I think, are very proud of right now is we never approached the whole subject matter as traditional or conservative. We approached it as nuances. We wanted to bring the new initiatives that are happening out there within our industry to show people what other organizations are doing centered around the topic that we're involved with and education that's credible because there's a lot of not credible information that is out there. I mean, everybody and his brother became a coach during COVID. Sure. That doesn't make them credible when we're talking about people's emotional health and well-being. That's right. But You know, again, therapy is fine, but we don't talk about therapy. We're not clinicians. We're not therapists. We're not psychiatrists. However, we are launching a show tomorrow, which is one of six shows that we're producing between now and June. And we have very luckily met Dr. T from Aberdeen, Scotland, who is a TV celebrity psychiatrist. I know it sounds a little odd, but it it sounds a, like counterintuitive or, or contradictory, right. but yeah, right. but I'm it's signed not, up for the event. Yeah. He is going to spread some light and have people in our industry who are attending look at things a little bit differently because in his mind, you know, our event is industry, an event is good medicine. That's what we do know. Because if we really take it into more of a medical side of things, you would, you do agree events are good medicine because people now especially want to come together. And that's, that's connection. That's belonging. So he wants to take it deeper than that and teach people what it looks like to become emotionally fit. And I think that's the thing. And these are, these are the subjects we follow and lay our hats on because we don't want to be talking like everybody else. We want, yeah. we want to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. And talk about it so the young people will relate to it. And that's really important to me. I love that term, emotional fitness. With your permission, I know that this is an international relationship because you're Canadian and I'm from the United States. But 
whatever patents are on that term, I would like to borrow it temporarily, emotional fitness, and we can work out all the legal mumbo jumbo <laughs> afterwards. Okay. Um, on that note, Janice, I want to, I want to continue along this topic, but go to another nuance about burnout and, you know, burnout in the event industry, they kind of go hand in hand. It feels like Groundhog Day, which is a, a metaphor that an analogy that's come up on our podcast with great frequency more and more. Um, Groundhog Day, like things it's over and over, it's being repeated, it's a broken record. You know, these topics, event industry and burnout, they go hand in hand. I recently had a guest and a certified meeting professional that I worked with for years who has now moved into consulting. She's also speaking, Nicole Brusewitz, who we did a lot of great stuff together with bringing keynote speakers into her events. And she highlighted this irony. You can be engaged and exhausted, dedicated and depleted, love your job and still burn out. What do you think are some of the biggest contributing factors towards burnout at work today? And how can event professionals who have one of the most stressful careers continue to keep that flame going? Well, and as I'm asking that question, it might be a whole separate episode for a podcast, but we'll, we'll, we'll include it in this one. This is true. Listen, I, I have opened my doors for the last two years to many strangers, to be honest with you, who I've never met before, who are in this industry and who are struggling and who just need somebody to listen to them and maybe direct a little bit as to what maybe they could do, because there's a lot of liability, a lot of, you know, legal aspects of working in toxic leadership and trying to get out. So, you know, burnout is a common term that's used by many people in our industry because we're all using the same words, right? It's just popular. But the truth of the matter is, is that we are definitely struggling on staffing. We all know that people who left this industry that did not want to come back and some of the more, you know, in the vendor positions, for example, where, you know, it's hard to get staffing for catering or, you know, it's tough to find people who maybe want to work in your office still in this industry. A lot of people have changed and done an about face and gone into other industries because they've had enough here. A lot of the problems stem from the fact that a lot of people are wearing masks. They don't talk about their problems. They don't show their problems because they're still very ultra concerned about their reputations. And that's the part that's very difficult. And that's why training is so important. You don't even realize just how many people I realize because I get the calls, I get the emails, I get the text messages, and it's mind-boggling. But our industry as a whole does not, does not see all of that. That's what keeps burning my fire, to be honest with you, is that it's tragic. I really feel it's tragic because you have some major bright people out there who have really suffered. And this past summer, I actually did a little bit of a project within a project which was to approach leaders in our industry and have them tell their mental health journeys, their emotional health journeys, whatever we want to call it. And they did. And I have to tell you, the analytics on our page on LinkedIn went way up wow. because it was the first time that leaders who had been awarded and respected all their life have actually said and admitted to the fact that this was their struggle. And everybody had a different story to tell, but it was the same story at the end of the day. Yes, there is a lot of destigmatized things that have occurred in the last couple of years, maybe even three years. But again, it will not change the problem unless we are proactive and doing something more than just giving people therapy benefits. It just, you know, it just is. Yeah. And going back to, I'm not trying to be lighthearted or minimize it, but that Groundhog Day, it's like build up to the event. And as you get towards the event, you pull all nighters or it's a badge of honor where, you know, you sleep less and you're eating poorly and, you know, the shoes that you're wearing. And then it's like the Super Bowl. And then I'm out of the office for X amount of time. And it's just this cycle as opposed to, being able to regulate and govern it. And why can't you be optimal all the way through, or at least have that be an aspiration? Things happen, breakdowns happen, the power goes out in a convention center for six hours and everything gets 
turned upside down, but to have that emotional fitness to be able to govern and regulate and prioritize and make choices and manage the the chaos and the stress is what we're talking about here and what we want to have meeting professionals in the meeting industry have that extra tool in their tool belt to be able to uh, utilize that. It has to do with burnout as well. I'm going to sum it up in one word, culture. When you start working at a new position in a new company, you either are going to buy into their culture or not. When we talk about caring culture, I see caring culture very differently maybe than other people see it. The bigger corporations, hotel chains, things like that, they see culture differently as well. Right, right. You know, designing a wellness menu is not the answer. It's great. It appeals to people's, you know, mindset of today, but that's not the answer to the problem. Yeah. I think it's still softening the ground, but it's not planting the seeds with deep roots exactly. yet. Yes. Yeah. 100%. But you're, you're in there with the, with the shovel doing the, doing the good work. I want to move the conversation. It stays connected to our theme here of today, but to a little bit different direction, you know, about today's travelers and how they're seeking deeper experiences, whether it's in mindfulness, emotional health, wellness the environment that they're going to be moving in, the physical environment, apart from, let's say, booking a keynote speaker who's an expert in that area of emotional health, emotional fitness, what other strategies or experiences, immersive or otherwise, can event professionals incorporate into events that engage the mind, body, and soul And most importantly, expand their understanding and their muscle around emotional fitness. My answer to that, it really depends also on if if this is an incentive travel trip or if it's a conference or trade show. My honest opinion about incentive travel trips is that there should not be anything meeting related. No speakers, no nothing. What people are looking for is, is an experience and to get out into, you know, wherever they are. It could be, let's say it's Costa Rica as an example. There's so much to consume in a country like that. There's hiking, there's trails, there's, you know, the beautiful green, you know, pastures, it's not really pastures, but, you know, forests that they have, the wildlife. Like when you get a group of people together and they're all experiencing something that is, has nothing to do with work, that's when the travel in my mind is going to be successful. You can talk about retreats until you're blue in the face, but what does a retreat really give you? You know, if, if you're involving people in an action that is restorative, replenishing, yeah, curative, organic, holistic, we can put all those words like accessories on the trip, but that is what people want. And so, you know, it's different when you're going to a trade show or a conference. There's an expectation right. that you're going to have speakers and you're going to have education and breakouts and all the rest of it. And that's fine. Networking and all that. You can, yeah. Yeah, you can only do so much at those kinds of events. I thought IMEX was a great example of a, co- a very large conference that did a great job on creating a micro area, almost boutique looking, for Smaller conversations, micro conversations, and that I was involved with and found that very, very attractive. And I think everybody else did as well. It was colorful. It was interesting. People wanted to hear different speakers and it came together very well. You know, their big word for 2024 now is impact. And I think it's a great word. How are we as humans impacting others? So, I, again, feel that emotional health and wellness has to impact in a greater way to help people get to where they feel that they can impact again, rather than feel like they're not part of something. Very well said. And that word impact, you you see, I've seen it in a lot of conference titles, right? The names of a lot of conferences, you know? You know, I started a campaign not too long ago, and I'll share it with you. I started, it's called Hello, My Name is Human. Yeah, I've seen it. And... What I love about that campaign is that it's not, you and I could meet Seth at a conference as an example, and I probably won't remember your name the next day because I've met a whole bunch of people that day, Right, right. but it's how you make me feel, Seth. 
right? You've made me feel completely comfortable during this podcast. You have, I feel like there's a natural conversation happening and we're just being honest, you know, and authentic with each other. And that's what Hello, My Name is Human is about. It's not like my mother gave me that name. I gave myself that name because it's how I want people to feel when they're in my company. So that's, that's important. And that's what I did at IMAX. I took my sign that said, hello, my name is human. And I had many leaders stand with that sign, even those that rejected my ideas. (laughs) I saw those images. I saw those (laughs) images. That was very, very cool. And, you know, it, it made me stop. And I said, oh, there, there is something that is healthy. A uh, healthy provocation, you know, that pulls in and stops and makes you makes you think and generate some curiosity. It was very, very cool. Impact. It's a word you hear a lot. In 2024, you're going to hear more of it. How do we impact each other? How do we impact organizations? How do we impact thought leadership? Everything we do is going to expand or contract your relationship, whether again, it's with an individual, attendees, your vendors, the organization as a whole. What we look for here is to impact in a lasting, meaningful way with the speakers and the curation that we do. We're providing messaging and presentations that make an impact, that have a duration over time, and are aligned with the values of your organization and your initiatives and what it is that you want to accomplish beyond the meeting itself, so that that through line can be carried and the impact can continue. For all those meeting planners out there that are interested in that, give us a call. This is what we are all about, making an impact that lasts and has meaning. So are you ready for our our whimsical 20 questions part of the podcast here? Is this the one I have to answer really fast? Well, you can answer as fast as what is natural for you. Don't feel like you're going to be rushed. How about, let's say it this way, be quick, but don't hurry. Okay. All righty. Are you ready? I'm ready. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. What's the most interesting thing about you, Janice, that we wouldn't know from your resume? I'm the most creative person you'll ever meet. Ah, okay. I like that confidence. Social media, friend or foe? Friend, very much so. We run our entire uh, community off of social media. It works. Ice cream, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla for sure. Toppings? Uh, Strawberry. Pizza, plain or toppings? Toppings for Which ones? Which ones? I like caramelized onions, mushrooms, peppers. That's what I like, vegetables. Got it. What's the next place on your travel bucket list? Bali. Ooh, man. I love, I I dream about that place. Have a great time when you go. What are you either reading, binging, not binging right now? Jay Shetty. Oh, that's right in your wheelhouse. Yes. Mel Robbins. That's, (laughs) that's a bullseye on the, of the wheelhouse. What's one thing you do that instantly makes your day better? Giving. Sometimes myself, sometimes to my community, sometimes to someone on the street that I don't even know, which has happened to me. I think that that's a great kind of way to wrap it all up and put a bow on this conversation. Janice, I feel like uh, we're going to be revisiting this conversation to learn a little bit more about what you've accomplished as you softened the ground and began to plant some seeds and where you've been able to have this breakthrough as a pioneer in this conversation and bring it forth into the meeting professions industry. I just thank you for your willingness to talk about the hard conversations, the willingness to uh, get into the nuances. I know there's more nuance than what we covered, but really, you know, reveal and get under the hood of some areas where people typically don't want to go or don't even know how to begin to go there. So thank you for that courage and the important conversation that you're bringing to the community. Also, I want to thank our listeners for joining us again, coming back for these great insights, this great thought leadership, and making our podcast the success that it is. For first-time listeners, thank you so much for tuning in. 
please share with your colleagues, your friends, your family, your loved ones, even strangers on the street. Let them know about our podcast. We thank you for being with us. We feel you're smarter because of it. We'll see you next time.